In this lesson, we'll define Coulomb's Law and a couple examples to illustrate its characteristics. And this shouldn't be really all that new because it's extremely closely related to what we've already covered with universal gravitation. So we're going to relate the force between two charges separated by a distance r. Simple as that. And without any proof, I could just relate it back to the analogy to gravity. You could probably come up with the proportionalities, namely that the electric force is going to be proportional to Q1, just like it would be proportional to the mass, the gravitational force, mass 1, and also mass 2, so it's proportional to Q2. And in addition, we have any time you have a force field from a point in three-dimensional space, the way it diverges out, it's an inverse square law. So 1 over r squared as well. And we can combine all those proportionalities into one giant proportionality. And there it is. Now, to make a proportionality an equality, you know that we need to put a constant in front of it. So I just did that. And we now have Coulomb's Law. And we recognize with standard units that the electric force will be in newtons. The Q has a, is a new unit that we're not so familiar with. It's the Coulomb. It's a certain quantity of charge. And then R is going to be in meters. K, the proportionality constant to empirically make this work this proportionality into an equality and make this work for newtons and meters squared and all that and coulombs here k is equal to 9 times 10 to the ninth newton meters squared over coulomb squared you will notice that this proportionality constant is many 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 orders of magnitude larger than the gravitational constant which was had an exponent of negative 11. now Let's look at these two positive point charges. And what happens to the force, the electrical force, if we'll make Q1 go up by a factor of 2, Q2 by 3, and we'll cut the distance in half. Let's see what happens. Well, to figure that out, just put them into a ratio. The new electric force compared to the original electric force is K2Q1, 3Q2, because that's what we did, over one half r squared over the original k q1 q2 over r squared what happens to that big mess well a lot of it goes away the q's go away and just the numerical coefficients are left so we have two times three over a quarter over one which is two times three times four which is 24 and so we have our answer in this particular case that the new force becomes 24 times as big as the old force I want to now consider having two conducting spheres and they're going to touch. When they touch, it results in a 50-50 sharing of their charge. And then they're going to separate. And so what's the new force after they touch together and separate? So that's the scenario. We have 5q and negative q to begin with. Now when they touch, they're going to share the total charge equally. Well, what is the total charge? We have plus 5 minus 1q is 4q. So that's the total. So each sphere has 2q. All right. So plus 2q on both of them. And so now, like we just did a moment ago, we can put the forces into a ratio, the new compared to the old. Well, one thing we can see right away plus 5 and minus 1, it's going to result, you know, opposites attract. So the forces come toward each other. Afterwards, they're the same kind of charge, so they're going to repel. <laughs> but let's look at the ratio. 2, well, K2Q2Q two two Q over R squared, that's the new one, over K5Q negative Q over R squared, is 2 times 2 over negative 5, which is negative 4 fifths. So there's our answer, namely that the new electric force is minus four fifths times the original. And it's a repulsion, so we will put the arrows in the appropriate direction. There we go. All right, now, 
That makes you feel very good, I'm sure. And I just want to ask the question, you know, these the magnitude of these two forces is pretty close, minus four fifths. The new one is just a little bit smaller in magnitude. What distance do we have to set these equal to to have the original force Fe, to make the force magnitudes equal? So let's do that. Let's set it up. So we have K4Q squared over R prime squared. In other words, 2Q times 2Q is 4Q squared, and the new radius squared is going to be equal to the original, which is K5Q squared over R0 squared. We're only worried about magnitudes now. So all we're going to do is solve for R prime. That's the goal. Well, K's go away, the Q squareds go away. We have 4 over R prime squared is 5 over R0 squared. So if we cross multiply, we get this. And finally, we get our coveted answer. R prime squared is square root of 4 fifths R0. Now, as a last example, I want to take a look at a positive test charge Q3 and find its position where it experiences no electric force from these other two forces that are also positively charged but unequal in size. And, of course, they'll be pushing on this charge. Q1 pushes on Q3, F13. Q2 pushes on F on Q3, F2 on 3. Okay, so both of them are pushing the opposite way, so to speak. And we're going to find x, the distance from Q2. The total distance, 30 centimeters. Now, there, it may be tempting for you to be confused about relating this to our gravitational analysis of the center of mass of a system. That's not what we're talking about. So we can see this one is a lot more charge, actually four times the charge of this one. Doesn't mean this is going to be way over here. In fact, the opposite is true. What this problem is very analogous to is the gravitational problem where you leave, say, the Earth and you're going toward the moon and somewhere along here it experiences no gravitational field or gravitational force. It's exactly like that kind of problem. So you've already done this, but we'll go ahead and go through it. We want to make f of 2 on 3, the force of this one on this, equal the force of 1 on 3, and there we've solved it. We will have solved the problem. So let's go ahead and set that up with Coulomb's Law. KQ2, Q3 over x squared, that's this force here, is going to be equal to KQ1, Q3 over, this is R minus x quantity squared. So there you go. K's go away, Q3's go away. Simplifies the Q2 over Q, or sorry, Q2 over x squared is Q1 over R minus x squared. Now, what are we going to do with that? I'm going to get the x's together. So I'm going to bring the r minus x squared part up here. And I'm going to bring the q2 underneath. There we go. Now to simplify this and get x isolated, just square root both sides. <clears throat> and we have r minus x over x is square root of q1 over q2, which we can rewrite as follows. r over x minus 1 is rad q1 over q2. And I'm going to bring the 1 over to the other side. So we have square root of q1 over q2 plus 1. Now to get x by itself, this is just algebra. If you have a better way to do it, go ahead. But I'm just going to invert both sides. x over r is 1 over this previous expression. So now if I multiply by r, we get r over rad q1 over q2 plus 1. OK, time to plug in numbers. Let's do it. X is, of course, this is going to be in centimeters because I'm leaving R as 30 centimeters. Nothing wrong with that. Q1 over Q2, 10 to the minus 6 goes away. We have 2 over 8, so plus 1 in the denominator. 30 over 1.5 gives us X being equal to 20 centimeters. So there you go. That's how you do that kind of problem. And once again, it's probably enough physics fun for right now. And with all the positive vibes going on in this little lesson, 
you should be feeling very good about yourself.